everyone's all smiles and laughs until the timid boy in the glasses turns into the blue Bigfoot of the X-Men. Mutants come in various shapes and sizes with various abilities, but what's better than having both the fists and the wits? Behind this blue mutant is the timid child prodigy Hank McCoy, and his intellect blended in with the superhuman strength of the beast is enough to make this mutant both smart and intimidating. Today we're discussing the 10 scenes where Beast went beast mode in the X-Men movies. But before we move on, why don't you hit that subscribe button, eh? Now, enough talk, because it's time to punch the boy, awaken the beast, and borrow his fist for a few moments. Here we go. <laughs> Number 10, Azazel vs Beast. Azazel's a teleporting mutant and one of the oldest allies of Sebastian Shaw. He's the best martial artist within the Hellfire Club and his tail is a sheer instrument of death. Towards the end of X-Men First Class, the X-Men come face to face with the Hellfire Club. Shaw's bent on causing a nuclear war, Charles Xavier is determined to stop him and Magneto wants revenge from Shaw for killing his mother. Among this mishmash of objectives, Beast and Havoc take on Azazel. We sit at the edge of our seats and watch as Azazel almost plunges his deadly tail through Beast's skull. As tough as he may be, everyone needs saving sometimes. And who better to save his life than the love of his life herself? Mystique distracts Azazel long enough for Beast to knock his lights out. Number 9. Taking Down Magneto Unlike Beast, who believes in harmony among species, Magneto believes that mutants should fight against humans by any means necessary. So, when a mutant cure is created from the DNA of Leech, a mutant who can nullify the powers of other mutants, Magneto, true to his psychotic nature, decides to kill Leech. Beast, being the diplomat who wants the freedom of beings of all kinds, stands with the X-Men to protect the mutant boy and the humans alike. The fighting kicks off and Beast rages on, even impressing Logan with his brute force. It seems that underneath the diplomat lies a beast who enjoys the thrill of a good fight. But a fight can't be won by just landing well-aimed punches and Beast is quick to figure this out. Teaming up with Logan, Beast lands the final blow in the battle and injects Magneto with the cure, ending the fight. It didn't attack the cells. It enhanced them. It didn't work. Beast! or Hank McCoy, desperately wants to get rid of his physical mutation, a desperation leading to a Jekyll and Hyde scene which we'll talk about later. Hank is the brains in the team. I mean the guy single-handedly designed Cerebro, not to mention the special suits he made for Havoc and Banshee, allowing them better control of their powers. As the team gets ready to face Shaw, they find a box containing their new suits designed by Beast. The hideously yellow suits make us realise that as smart as he may be, Hank's sense of fashion is questionable at best. Do we really have to wear these? Like them or not, these suits were the same ones worn by the team in Dark Phoenix when they went for their outer space mission, so they must be pretty effective. Timid Hank eventually suits up and emerges to be a total badass, his mutations enhanced by his serum gone wrong. Beast takes his first steps in being comfortable in his own skin and flaunts his genius, asserting to the team that he can obviously pilot the plane he designed. Never look better, man. Hank? Don't mock me. What are you doing? What Raven would have. Every hero has a dark side, and the right trigger can turn anyone into a killer. For Beast, that trigger was Mystique's death. To be honest, it's shocking to see Hank fuming with hate when he's usually kind and understanding. We watch in horror and disbelief as Hank, an excellent and caring teacher, declares his student and teammate Jean as his mortal enemy and gets in league with Magneto to kill Jean. However, his rampage comes to an end after he's convinced that Mystique would never have wanted Jean's death in lieu of hers. Beast then steps up to fight the Dabari, an alien race who whose planet was destroyed by the Phoenix Force. He takes down as many Dabari as possible, throwing aside his vengeance along with his handfuls of Dabari. Stricken by grief, Beast may have had his moments of weakness, but he was quick to bounce back and put his life on the line to keep Dabari from getting to G. Professor? 
here's what happens when you tick off the protective Hank McCoy. In Days of Future Past, Logan goes in search of Professor Xavier in the hopes of getting help to prevent the disastrous Sentinel-infected future. In Xavier's school, Logan's greeted by a scrawny kid. He's all smirks when he realizes that this skinny boy is in fact the burly blue beast. Hank has been taking care of the professor and the school ever since things went into decline and tries desperately to keep the professor out of the drama. Usually, Hank has a very polite demeanor and less aggravated, and he's definitely aggravated when Logan punches him in the face. Phasing into his beast form, he lunges at Logan and throws him across the hallway. The gentle beast almost claws Logan's face off, and we can't help but wonder whether young beast has anger issues. Hank? So it's no secret the Beast is head over heels in love with Mystique ever since he laid eyes on her. But life just becomes brutal when you realize that the love of your life is responsible for an apocalyptic future. In Days of Future Past, Logan, accompanied by Beast and Magneto, managed to foil Mystique's assassination attempt of Trask since his death paves the way for the ghastly Sentinels in the future. Now in the movie, Mystique escapes this mayhem and sneaks into a hospital to get her bullet wounds treated, but in a deleted scene, she returns to Xavier's mansion. Beast to her wounds and things get steamy between the two. It's no surprise that Beast forgives Mystique for causing an apocalyptic future in a few skipped heartbeats. They morph into their mutant forms and kiss passionately, taking on a matching blue hue. Clearly, Hank's dislike towards physical mutation has changed significantly since he last saw Mystique as he admits to her that, even though the world may think of them as ghastly, he believes her to be beautiful. He was mutant and proud. In 1983, an ancient Egyptian mutant hailed as a god named Apocalypse awakens from millennia of slumber to take over the world. He begins recruiting his four horsemen, which includes the deadly Psylocke. When Apocalypse kidnaps Charles Xavier, the X-Men come to his rescue and a war rages on. Beast goes head to head with Psylocke, who projects psychic energy into a blade that can cut through metal like butter. Despite looking like a hunky blue bear, Beast is quite agile and light-footed. The fighting intensifies when Psylocke comes a whip by using her psychic energy. We see just how unflinching Brave Beast can be as he keeps Psylocke busy while the others rescue Xavier. Psylocke's sadistic tendencies are laid bare as she slowly strangles Beast with a smile. But Beast doesn't yield so easily and he manages to escape. When the X-Men introduce Hank, he's a skinny young man in his 20s, a child prodigy who graduated Harvard at the age of 15. Although he later becomes a representative for the mutant community, young Hank was shy and ashamed of his mutation. Xavier, Eric, Moira and Raven walk into a covert facility where Hank's busy at work as a researcher for the CIA. Hank squirmed uneasily when Xavier exposed him, and it's clear that he's not so confident or proud of being a mutant. When B sees Raven, it's love at first sight at least for Hank that is. Encouraged by his new friends, Hank reveals his claw-like feet. Judging by the way Hank fidgets, we can guess that his feet were never received with such amazement and awe. Beast's confidence lights up with their smiles and it's evident that they're going to make a great team. You're amazing. Really? In the runner-up spot we have Beast versus Magneto. Like we said earlier, Beast usually has a very polite and calm demeanor and less aggravated, and what better way to aggravate him than threatening Mystique's life? We've already seen that he was even willing to kill Jean, his own student and teammate, so there wasn't a moment's hesitation when he took on Magneto for trying to kill Mystique. Magneto's psychotic brain conjured up the idea that murdering Mystique would prevent the slaughter of mutants in the future. With this in his mind, he prepares to kill Mystique when Beast comes to her rescue. Beast generally dislikes appearing in public in his mutant form, he even goes so far as to conjure up a serum that helps him retain his human appearance, but he shoves all these insecurities away for Mystique. In the end, Magneto manages to restrain Beast and escape, but for Beast, the fight was already won since Mystique was saved.
topping off our list is the iconic moment when Hank became the legendary beast. You know what they say, first time is the best. But to be honest, best was the last thing this was for our professor. Initially though, Hank McCoy wanted nothing more than to be rid of his animal-like feet. Hank tries to make a serum that will reverse his physical mutation and completes it after taking a sample of Raven's blood. After injecting himself, he's close to tears when his feet change to normality. But his happiness is soon replaced by horror when his mutation doubles back. The Jekyll and Hyde scene ends with glimpses of a blue furry beast. Come next morning, scrawny Hank had turned into the hairy blue beast we all know and love. Forced to accept his unusual appearance, he steps up to protect all mutant life. As Logan rightly says, Way to go, furball. So, did you get enough of our badass blue professor either smashing things, being smart, or just having some quality time with Mystique? Sound up down below in the comments about your favorite beast moment, and if I've missed something, why don't you do that scene justice by mentioning that below as well. That's it for today, Mutant fans. I'll see you next time on the TV Regent.